the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure in the story, Reservoir for Murder, The Green Hornet Strikes Again. He says I can take all the risks I want and they'll pay off. So why should I worry? Where's the phone around here? Oh, the only ones in the construction shop. Never mind, buddy. You warned me. You did your duty. Hey, wait. I am tired. Reporters wait for no man. I'm climbing that scaffold. I want to see this with my own eyes. They took this reservoir with knitting needles instead of feet squares, but someone's going to hear about it. Hey, what's, the, what's happening to that scaffold? The whole section's going to cave in. Did you see that? Did I see it? Holy mackerel. The piece of concrete is big as a truck. Gangway, i got to get that phone. No publisher's office. Hey, hey, this is Lowry. Where's the boss? Oh, what's the matter, Lowry? You sound excited. Where's the boss? Give me the boss. It's coming down around my ears. Yes, is that Lowry? Yes, it's Lowry, Mr. Reed. All right. Hello. Hello, Lowry. Boss, that's it with the Mackay. One section is caving in. The rest of our going? This case got Gunnigan. Yes, sir. Come on, Mike. Come. Well, blasphemy on the front page. 
No wonder that concrete wall caved in. Holy mackerel, this curtain is... What the... Hey, let's go, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's just... Oh. Ha <laughs> ah, ha, ah, very amusing. Where's the board? Oh, I knew you'd try to fight somebody bigger than you someday. Or was it a whole gang? Not the case. It was one guy with a ten ton blackjack in his face. Well, uh, so that's why you didn't come back to the office last night or phone in. Fighting, huh? Holy mackerel, what kind of a reception is this? So help me, boss. I got this while I was on the job. You did? Sure. I was checking over that reservoir after dark. And just when I find something good, blam, some monkey jumps me and sends me to Dreamland. Didn't wake up till this morning. Then you found something good. What do you mean? What I said, boss. I found enough to prove that crash was no accident. Good crash. No crew. accident? No, sir. Not when the steel support that is supposed to be embedded in that concrete is sort of halfway through. What? Yeah. Gosh, Mr. Reed, and the whole state is blaming Jeff Thorndyke, saying that he's responsible. Well, if that concrete was deliberately weak. It was, boss. Lowry, you're going back there. Miss Case, get a photographer to go back with Lowry and take pictures of that damage. Call the police. Whoa, man. whoa, boss. Mm -mm. What? No dice. You'd be wasting your time. Don't be silly, Lowry. Why would make a front page story that would scoop the town? Hold it, Mr. Just a moment. Go on, Lowry. We'd be wasting our time. Why? Because those steel girders aren't there anymore. Go on. When I woke up, I started to look again. Boy, somebody cleared those girders out of there like Lewis took bear. What good is a story without proof? <laughs> Now, gentlemen, please. Okay, John, I keep your chin up. I'm glad you're here, Reed. It's good to have someone backing me up. Senator just got the X out for me. Can't say I blame him. Kevin wasn't your fault, John. Yes, I know the Senator. It was, but someday we'll prove it. I doubt very much if you can prove that, Reed. Hello, Senator. Hello. You may go, Miss Bradby. Yes, sir. Well, for a as engineer in charge of that construction job, you've managed to put me in the soup. There's only one way I can satisfy the public. Come right to the point. Did you bring along your resignation? I can't understand what went wrong. I'm not interested in alibis. I'm interested in results. You didn't get them. I understand. Here's my resignation. Now, just a minute. Yes? The rat deserts the sinking ship. You bet dreamed of me, Reed. It is? I hit this department. I'm responsible for what happens. You're also responsible for the men under you. Yet you're making Thorndyke the ghost. I'm putting the blame where it belongs. If you read the sentinel, there might be some doubt that what happened was Thorndyke's fault. Poppy Cork. The story cooked up to make speculation. You know, Jim. Not from the sentinel, sir. There's no proof. Your reporter made that story up, and you believe him. I believe him, yes. But he didn't make it up. I know my reporter. And get this, Shevlin. The public has faith in the sentinel, too. There's no time for. Which is just what I said. You're yapping about the interest of the public. Well, get this, Shuffle. The Sentinel has a circulation that's almost as big as all the others combined. And this morning, after our story, our switchboard was flooded with phone calls. Phone calls about what? About the cave and at the new reservoir. Shuffle, if you're interested in public opinion, you might be interested to know that the public does believe that story in the Sentinel. At least enough so that they don't blame Thorndike. Yes. That's true. If you want a record of their names and address... No, no, that... I don't doubt you. Uh, uh, Thorndike, this, uh, this puts a different complexion on things. Shevlin is always sensitive to public opinion. Aren't you, Shevlin? Yes, Senator, yes. Do, you, do you mean my resignation? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm not accepting it, Thorndike. There, uh, in the wastebasket. I don't know what to say. Never mind. Just go ahead and make sure the job is finished. And finished right. It'll be done right. Still puzzled about Get what I just let's go. Can't you see the senator wants to be alone to eat his own words? Goodbye, Shovelin. Next time, don't be too anxious to throw out a good work. Goodbye, Senator. It'll be done right. I'll make sure it's done right. Goodbye. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish that job. When it's done, I'll make absolutely sure Paul Dyke loses his job. I'll make it positive. Here, let's go. 
Why, why can't you fool? I don't want to be seen. You've heard Thorndyke is going ahead with the construction work. Yeah. Thorndyke is too good a man. If he keeps going, he'll end up with my job. Yeah. That puts it up to you, Bender. This time, I want a big accident, you understand? Big enough so that not even the Sentinel can keep Thorndyke in his job. I'll be finished with the construction in three weeks, Senator. The water will be piling up behind the dam. A whole lot of water, Senator. That's it, Bender. I think you understand. Yeah, I understand. If the water should break that retaining wall and flood the valley, there'd be a lot of damage. Thorndyke uh, couldn't explain that. Yeah, Senator. And besides, there wouldn't be any evidence. The water would wash away every sign. <laughs> okay, Senator, you can count on it. There's going to be a flood. <laughs> following weeks, while the damage was being repaired and the dam completed, Ed Lowry made frequent trips to the Maple Valley construction job, and his reports back to the Sentinel were all the same. He saw no sign of trouble, but he wasn't the only one on watch. When darkness fell each night, a small man, inconspicuous and slight, prowled around the reservoir. That man was Cato, Britt Reed's Filipino valet. Yes, Mr. Britt, I observed Maple Valley Reservoir at night as you direct. You weren't seen, Cato? No, sir. Back home in Philippines, I learned how to move silent, like younger cat. What did you find out, Peter? Is there anything wrong? Mm, no. Why do you say it that way? I'm not certain, Mr. Britt. But there's one man I observed him at night. Act very strange. Strange? Nothing very definite. Only he acts like a man who doing wrong. A man named Bender. Bender, eh? Name is familiar? Yeah, well, he's the man who told Larry to stay away when that section of wall fell. I wonder. Yes? I wonder if he's the one who could have knocked Larry out that same night. Oh, he's possible, yes. Keep watching, Cato. Pretty soon that job will be completed. We don't want anything to happen. Green Hornet. 
Go ahead, Cato. We're going to find this man, Thunder. We'll get the answer. Cato flipped on the headlights. A photoelectric cell registered the beam, started a small electric motor. Silently, a huge section of apparently solid wall swiveled upward. The sleek black car rolled into the street, turned and headed north toward Maple Valley. And behind it, the wall once more dropped into place. Unconscious till then, yes. Good. I'll take the Black Beauty and head back to town. I want to be at the Sentinel tomorrow. I'll meet you at 11 in the evening. Oh, where, where is meeting? The junction of Route 22 and State Highway 16 in the valley here, Cato. And take care of Thunder. Came for the senator. It wasn't on his private line, so I took it. 
Mr. Thorndyke, it, it was a man reminding the senator to be at the junction of Route 22 and Highway 6 near 11 tonight. The junction in the valley? Yes, and to make $10,000. But the senator was gone already. I couldn't tell him. Oh, sister, calm down. You're all excited. Oh, why shouldn't I be? The, the man who called was a green horse. The horse? Holy mackerel, this is a case for the police. The police? Joe, sure, hold on the floor, Casey. And tell Gunnigan to get set for a page one scoop. 11 o'clock, huh? We may not make it by 11, but we'll be there soon after. Come on, Thorndyke. <laughs>
popular radio dramas created by George W. Trendle are a copyrighted feature of The Green Hornet, Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. Thank <laughs> you.